So recorded. Right, third time. The House comes to oral questions. The first is in the name of the Right Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister and asks, does she stand by all of her government's policies? Mr. The Speaker. Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yes. Mr Speaker, in light of her statement that, quote, we want to say hand on heart, we want to be a society judged on how we look after our vulnerable, is she aware that many of the children in partnership schools are vulnerable? So why is she moving to close those schools? Mr Speaker, um, as I said yesterday, we are working closely as we can with those schools to transition them, to make sure that they, those children have the best quality education we can, and that includes making sure they have registered teachers and are being taught the curriculum. Now. Mr Speaker, uh, when the Prime Minister uses the word transition, is she aware that the legislation her government introduces certainly closes the partnership schools? It makes their closure absolutely certain because legislation will be passed to achieve it. But there is no guarantee those schools will be able to reopen. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, it ends the model, it stops future contracts, but it still allows this government to negotiate with those schools to try and keep them open if they are willing to have registered teachers and to teach the curriculum. Speaker, what current guarantee can she give to the students and parents of the partnership schools which she is legislating to close that they will be allowed to reopen uh, with some other status? Mr Speaker, as we said, we're stopping any opening in the future with those who are currently uh, operating. We've said we want to work constructively with them. There is the ability for them to operate as special character schools or even perhaps alternative education operators and providers. And that's the work that the Ministry of Education is undertaking with them as we speak. Uh, what I would like to give them is the assurance that we're working diligently on this. I know that some of the rhetoric coming from the opposition isn't helping with their security that that's what we're doing. Um, Speaker, well, can I ask the question again? What guarantee can the Prime Minister give that a partnership school meeting the criteria, or that a partnership school will be able to reopen, a guarantee that is necessary for the peace of mind of the students and the parents who attend those schools and may not be familiar with the legal niceties she's referring to. Mr Speaker, as we've said, I can assure those parents if their school in which their child is attending is willing to have registered teachers, to teach to the curriculum and to operate with the same kind of funding parameters, uh, generally order, speaking, order. Uh, as state schools, then that is exactly what we're seeking from those schools. Ultimately, those parents will want to probably have those same assurances from those current providers because a lot of this decision sits in their hands too. Oh. So, Mr Speaker, is it now the case that if the schools close, it's the school's fault yeah. Uh, not the government's, and that she yeah. won't actually offer a guarantee that schools will be able to reopen, and therefore parents and students should be told the truth now rather than misled through months of complex legal negotiations. Um, Mr Speaker, if these schools have at their heart the best education for their kids, then I imagine they should be out of transition. Supplementary question, the Honourable Chris Hipkins. Mr Speaker, is the Prime Minister aware that existing partnership schools are being urged to close rather than negotiate with the Ministry of Education yeah. in good faith and that that urging is coming from opposition members of Parliament? Oh. Um, Mr Speaker. No, no, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, disallow that supplementary. It is, uh, I, think the, I think the Leader of the House uh, has a special standard uh, and, and he's going to stick with it. The right on all Bill English. But he is worried. Uh, will the Prime Minister take the opportunity to visit Pacific Advance School, as I did on Monday, talk to the staff and the students, hear the stories of the way that school has changed the lives of those 13, 14 year old girls? 16, 17-year-old boys, of whom, as the government says, is only a thousand, so order, they don't matter much. Order. 
Will she visit a school, look them in the eye, hear the stories and reassure them that the government guarantees the continuation of that school? Order. Order. I am going to ask or let the Prime Minister answer it, but I am also uh, going to remind the um, father of the house that in the last couple of weeks I'd like to, him to set a very good example uh, which involves succinct questions and just to warn people, especially sitting very close to him, uh, if they ask one that long, it will be ruled out. Um, Mr Speaker, that assumes that I haven't met and spoken to students from charter schools and those who teach there before I have. In fact, just a few weeks ago I had a conversation with someone who works in a charter school where they said they were absolutely confident that because they have registered teachers and teach the curriculum that they could transition and will. Is the Prime Minister aware that as part is the Prime Minister aware that as part of this shambles, no. education officials told a select committee this morning the closures could cost up to fifteen million dollars? Mr Speaker, again, the constant framing from the opposition around closures when this government, this government is working. Let me explain to Mr Smith. If he listens closely, we will not enter into any future contracts. We will negotiate with existing schools to try and transition them. It is that side of the House that is scaremongering and trying to cost the taxpayer money. So is the, is the Prime Minister unaware that her legislation, first that her legislation guarantees the closure, legislates the closure of the schools, and secondly, that, she will, that the government will have contractual obligations of up to a million dollars per school if the schools are closed as partnership schools, regardless of the nature of a transition. Mr Speaker, I know that the member understands this. We're ending the model that doesn't stop the ability of a school to start operating as a school of special character. A point, was Nikki Kaye's a point of order or a question? The Minister did not answer the question by the Leader of the Opposition, uh, and there were it was twofold points there, and she should answer the question. Uh, I, I think she addressed the question, which was a requirement. Point of order, David Seymour. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek your guidance. Uh, at what no, point... No, Member will sit down. The Speaker's role... The member will sit down. It's not the speaker. It's not the speaker's role to do tutorials here. I'm willing to give the member one in my office later. A point of order. A, a point of order, David Seymour. I'm not seeking a guidance, Mr. Speaker. I want to know at what point is the Prime Minister misleading the House when she introduces legislation? Order. The member will resume his seat, and he's lost the supplementaries for this week. He knows. He knows well that to accuse a member of misleading the House in the House in that manner is disorderly. Uh, if he's got any supplementaries left for this week, he doesn't anymore. Right. Question number two, Tamati Coffey. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Finance and Regional